All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about monitoring a fabric capacity. Uh, talk about a few options you have and share a Power Automate based solution that you may wanna leverage. Uh, if you're a capacity admin, uh, you know the great thing about fabric capacities is once you turn them on and give people access to that, they can create all sorts of uh, things that are very valuable for their business. The downside is, is those same people may unintentionally consume a lot of capacity units and indirectly affect uh, other work happening on that capacity. Um, so uh, monitoring it can be key. So let's let's talk about a, a few of the options you have available. Um, this is the Fabric Capacity Metrics app, definitely recommended for anyone that's a capacity admin. Um, you know, you've got this capacity unit utilization view over here, uh, and then this view over here is very useful um, to look at your overall utilization by, by date, uh, but also what you really want to look at is this throttling section here, because uh, this is where if you have people uh, or work that's taking up too much capacity, this is where you'll start to see it. And if you see here, you'll see these bars here. This is a trial capacity. I do very little on it. So, you know, everything, uh, it's very well behaved. There's not much to see here. In fact, I could go to the logarithmic scale um, just to see it a little better. Um, and uh, if you go to the documentation pages, which I definitely encourage you to do, there's a lot of detail about uh, how throttling works uh, on, on your capacity. Uh, there's also a really good blog, everything you need to know about uh, fabric capacities, which has some great info. So definitely encourage you to check those out. Um, on, on this page here, you know, there's sort of three tiers of uh, penalty that you can have when you use too much capacity. Uh, one is interactive delay, interactive rejection, and then background rejection. And how this works, you can look at each of them independently. And, you know, basically it's not until the bar reaches 100% that you actually realize that, that penalty. Um, but this gives you a good view and a heads up of when you're approaching it. Um, another quick tip here is um, here you see the, the bars are, there's kind of sparse here. There, uh, there's some sampling going on here. If you filter down to just one day by clicking over on this other chart here, you'll see this, uh, you'll get a value for every time point. Uh, so that's, that's real useful. Okay. Um, and so if you, if you look at this, you can see, okay, my 10 minute interactive is 2.39%. Um, again, far from having any kind of penalty. If I switch to logarithmic scale here, you can see, okay, by 60 minute or my interactive rejection one, it's 2.39% also. Um, so let's talk about um, some ways you can stay on top of things. So one is certainly you could come to the metrics app and just see how things are going. That's a pretty manual process. So, so how can we automate that? Um, one way is uh, in your capacity settings. And if you're a capacity admin, you can go to the admin portal, go to the capacity and there's this notification section here and you can have get notified here uh, to yourself or anyone else you specify when you hit a certain percentage of your available capacity. And that's a utilization. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to experience delay or rejection throttling um, just because you get to 100% because you may just go a little over and then you burn it back down and then go over again, burn it back down and never actually get to a penalty. So you may get a little more notifications from this setting than you may you may want. Um, another solution, and actually, this is what I originally was going to make this video about, but it turns out uh, Harry's BI has already done it, and it's a great video. I encourage you to check it out, um, but basically shows how to use the new data activator feature in Fabric uh, against the Metrics app to also um, get alerts and, and trigger other activity. So, so definitely check that out. Um, in this one, I'm going to talk about uh, Power Automate based Power Automate based solution um, to do a similar thing, and so this is the flow. Um, in the description is a link to the zip file where you could import this, and I'll just walk through how to use it, and in a second how to modify it um, so that you could monitor your capacity if you choose to use this. So I have it set up to run once an hour. Uh, you could change it to thirty minutes, fifty minutes, whatever you want. Um, it has this parse JSON step here where you put in um, some three key IDs that you're gonna need. And I'll show you in a second where to find those. Um, but you'll just, you know, 
replace the values that are here. Um, there is a DAX query par. And so we're actually going to be connecting to and querying uh, the data set, the semantic model behind the metrics app. And you actually have two options here. You have this top one, and then you have this one here that's all commented out. And so you can choose to use either. Uh, and I'll go through those in a second on uh, when I move over to DAX Studio. Um, but basically, you know, this has a DAX expression that will go and basically grab um, the last time point. So the very end of the chart I just showed you for throttling and get the latest value uh, that's there uh, for all three of uh, those three throttling views. So what's my current uh, value for interactive delay, interactive rejection and background rejection as a percentage. And I'm uh, multiplying it by 100 and rounding it to two decimal places just to give an easier number to work with at the end. Um, so that gets the latest time point. If you would prefer, um, you can delete that and then uncomment all these lines here. And what this one does is it goes and gets um, the last hour's worth of data. Um, there's a row for every 30 seconds, so that's 120 rows. Um, and then it gets the same uh, metrics there. And then basically it chooses the one that has the highest level of uh, interactive rejection. And I put this little rand here just in case uh, there's ties there. Uh, it doesn't cause any issues. Um, so basically this returns a single row, but it's the row in the last hour, what my highest level of interactive uh, rejection percentage was. And interactive rejection is usually the one where the capacity admin uh, starts getting phone calls. That is if people know that you're the capacity admin because uh, their stuff is actually getting rejected. Okay, so you may choose to use either of those. Then there's this uh, query, a Power BI semantic model action. And so this uses two of the other values from the parse JSON step. So the workspace ID and data set ID, which I'll show you in a second. It, I, we use that DAX query from here as the input. It goes off, does the query. It only takes like five to eight seconds in my experience. Uh, and then basically there's this nested if condition. Again, if you import it, you can go check this out in detail, but basically what it does is it first checks for, you know, am I at background rejection? I have a value of 100. Is it, you know, greater than or equal to that? Um, you may want to set that lower for all these, but you can customize that however you want. And so if you're if you're in that worst case condition of background rejection, you know, you've got a critical issue and it's basically a custom message that we're going to use in the email. Same thing. Uh, if that's not the case, then it looks at uh, interactive rejection. And then if, if it's not at 100 or higher, uh, then it looks at uh, interactive delay. And if none of those are met, then it just says, hey, all is well, uh, and it gives some information. Um, also doing a HTML table action here just to uh, create the, the data we pulled from the query into a simple table, and then basically send an email at the end. So you can also customize this step here with who you want the email to go to. Um, it takes this um, output here from the subject line, uh, compose step, uh, tells you the capacity ID, uh, and then gives you the table uh, that we made uh, above, right? So that's the notification you get um, just to see what it looks like. You know, here, here's what it looks like here. Uh, and again, this um, capacity is not under serious load. So I get the all as well message and it tells me what my interactive delay percentage was. So everything's fine here. Um, in the future, I may put out other flows where you can go get some more information. So if you are in one of these elevated states and starting to realize a, one of those throttling penalties there, um, get some more information about maybe which items are, are driving that uh, in, the, in the latest hour, for example. Okay, so that's the, that's the flow. Uh, so let's talk about how you get some of that information that you need. So one, the first thing you need to do is your, your workspace that houses your metrics app. So you install the metrics app through the template app. Hopefully you're aware of how to do that, um, but you need to put it on a premium capacity so that you can query it. Um, note, this is also needed to do Harry, Harry's BI solution. We use using Data Activator, uh, but he goes through that in his video. Okay, so in this case, you would go to workspace settings, 
Notice I've already done this because I've got the diamond here, but I would go to premium. And then I, I again, I have a trial capacity, um, but if you had your own capacity, you would you would click this option here and you can put it on the same capacity that you're you're monitoring. Um, and then you may need it. Um, I'll show in the next video uh, how I came up with the query that we're using in this. And so you would want to grab the workspace connection string here so you could connect to DAC, with DAC Studio to this workspace uh, so that you could refine the query uh, that you're doing there. OK, um, so that's that. Um, that's that's the next thing you need is to get your capacity ID. So if you go to the admin portal uh, and go to capacity settings. And in my case, I have a trial capacity. And if I click on that up here in the URL, I should have showed this before, you can just copy that and that's your capacity ID. So that's one thing that you need. OK, and then if we go back to the uh, metrics app workspace here, we'll grab the other things that we need. So we need the workspace ID uh, and the data set ID, semantic model ID. Um, so the the workspace ID is up here so we could copy that. Or you can just click on the semantic model one. And this URL has both the workspace, which is the, the group. All right. And then it also has the data set ID. OK, so once you have those three IDs, hopefully you're using clipboard history to make it easy on yourself and you've put the workspace uh, on to premium, uh, you're ready to to use the flow. And so, again, the description will have the link with the zip file. And to import that, you would go to Power Automate, make that power, power automate .com. Um, You don't need any special premium license. I have just the E5 on this. Hopefully you have the basic Power Automate license. But if you go to My Flows and go to Import, you would go to Legacy. And then you would upload the file that uh, is available in the link below in the description. Takes a sec. And then you'll just need to make a couple small changes. Um, one is to see this is select during import. It uses the Power BI connection and the Outlook connection for sending the email. So you would come here, you would choose the appropriate um, account to use, and then you'd hit import. And this this flow already exists exists here, so it'll it should import it and change the name. It'll put a two at the end or something to avoid duplication. And then once that's done, right, uh, the green check means you're successful. If I go back to my flows, you may need to refresh the page, and then you'll have this capacity checker. Mine has the dash two because I already have one there. You'll need to turn it on uh, and then you can edit it. And then this is where you would go. Um, you can either use the new designer experience, I'm old school still with the classic designer. And this is where, again, you could change your recurrence. You could, you would then paste those three ID values that we copied before. You would choose which version of these you want. They both return one row, so the rest of the flow works with either of these. Um, whether I want to just get the latest value or I want to get the highest value in the last hour, uh, nothing to change on the query step. Um, you could customize your compose line here, so you could come in and change the thresholds uh, where you want to uh, get notified. You can change the message that you get, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, HTML table should be fine. And then you can customize your email, the text that's in there, who it goes to, uh, et cetera. Okay. Then you would save your flow. Uh, we already turned it on. And then you would start getting a message every hour about that capacity. Um, in the next video, I'll talk more about how I sort of reverse engineered the metrics app uh, to generate this query. Uh, I may also come up with other queries that 
give additional useful information for someone that's trying to uh, figure out what is taking up um, all the capacity units on, on their capacity. 